What's up, honey love? What's up, girl? What's up, now, honey love? I see you. What you doing, real Sonia? What's up, Sonia? Fat fat mama Sonia. What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, Mayday? Lord Mayday. What's up, boy? What's up, Lord Mayday? What's up, my boy Doc? What you say, Doc? Hmm? What you say, Doc? What you say, Doc? It's my big boy, Doc. What you say? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another week, another episode of Game Dog Talk. And, of course, we got the legendary panel in the building. So far, we have schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia. How you doing today, sir? Real good. Welcome, everybody, in the in the chat. Welcome to the panel. And uh, thanks, everybody, for hooking up on the Patreon thing, man. That was a good show. It's going to get oh, better. Hell. And better. Yes, it was. And we have the legendary Bach, only in America. Kendall's, how you doing today, sir? Much love, much love to the to the awesome brothers, uh, brother Garcia and brother Kev, and um, and to the awesome um, the uh, chat brothers we have out there. You know what I'm saying? And and sisters, because I I see the beautiful Tay Tay in the building too already. Tay Tay, I mean, so I'm gonna let you go through the roll call. You know, yes, sir. Salute <laughs> to Asiatic soldier. In the building, we got a uh, bulldog bill in the building. We got Eddie uh Roser, I think that's how you say your name. Um, Outlaw Texas Kennels, Hugo, right. Tony Gardner, Miami okay. Snoopy 305, Vernon Stones, uh, Samurai Kennels, Woke in the building. Uh, let's see here, uh, Vernon Starr, all right, Vern. uh, Luigi, we have uh. Four of them in the building. All we got right. Ty Green. Uh, oh, William. Yeah. Okay. We got William in the super chat. <clears throat> Salute to William Kitson in the super chat showing love and support. Thank Much you, man. Love. Thank you a lot. Appreciate that. That's Thank brother you, Bill. Way to go, Will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, City Boy Kennel. Salute to your homie. AJ. <laughs> Self made Kennels. Going hard. Kennels twin. Two Going hard happened. twin in the building. Wins. Gullery Kennels. The homie Live Life Real. Salute. Live hey. Life. Uh, Freddie Gray. Salute. There he goes, my South African buddy. Yes, sir. Freddie. Uh, TTB in the building. May, uh, man made. All right. Let's see. Soul Power, a.k.a. Game Dump Kennel. Salute. Soul Power. The lovely brown sugar Tay Tay is in the building. There she is, the oh, queen. Okay. Yeah. The queen. Salute, yeah. Tay Tay. Happy holidays <laughs> to those of y'all who celebrate. Salute, salute. Much love, much love. Um, Blacklist Kennels. John Kramer. Hi, Blacklist. Dog. Can't read everybody, man, but thank all y'all for being in here today. I see you in here, Duke Nukem. Uh, uh, smooth Monty. Salute to everybody in here. There he oh, is. Smooth Monty. Yes, indeed. Definitely appreciate support. Okay, we got uh, Soul Power, aka Game Up Kennels, is in the super chat. He says, "Salute, yes, sir." Salute. He says, "Salute, General uh, Brother Bach and uh, Mr. Garcia." Salute, salute. Much love, Soul Power. Salute, brother. Uh, Trench and Wright in the super chat. Salute, homie. It says Patreon chat was fire. Can't wait to hear some more. Oh yeah, appreciate yes, it, indeed. Man. All of y'all yes, that signed up to the Patreon, thank y'all so much. The content yes. will get better and better, man, because it's a little more comfortable atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? I'm and sure they could feel it. I'm sure yeah. they felt it, Kev. We was able to speak about things we haven't really spoke up so much on it. Matter of fact, if I mean to interrupt, I, I, I know one thing, Brother Samurai seen and Brother Kev know a whole lot about the the breakdown of that uh those juices. Matter of fact, I, I learned things from Brother Kev the other day. I didn't know he had any. Yeah, oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Trent. Yeah, Kevin knows his stuff, man. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, you know, you got you know, if you if you if you if you're quiet long enough, that's how you can tell when people lie to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes about takes about five minutes to find out. That's right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Let's see here. Uh, who we got here? Samurai Kindles in that super chat. Appreciate the support, family. It says paying my Not dues, sure. April uh church. Salute, homie. 
Salute to you. Salute to much man. love. Much Make love. Y'all go subscribe to Semi Cool. You got a good channel over there. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Um, Smooth Monty in the super. There he is. There you go. Appreciate your support, Smooth Monty. He says, Happy Easter to everyone. Give that thumbs up. Yes, sir. Smash that like button, ladies and gents. Happy Easter, brother. Yeah, I, I, I don't deal with the pagan holidays, but much love anyway, brother. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I got you covered, brother. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Let's go on to get down to the smoke. Uh, we're waiting on uh, Ram and Brother Boone to get here, but uh, how's everybody week though? How's everybody week you been going, Mr. Uh, Garcia? Good, man. Good, just busy, 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 having a great time, man. Got school baby helping me and family helping me. We're getting it ready for that show on April 22nd. Right. Have all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, man. You're going to be, uh, you got a show on the same day as taking, uh, taking, uh, um, Ryan Garcia fight. Yeah. I'm going to record it. Okay. I, I was a heavy Ryan Garcia fan. I still like him, but, uh, I'm going to go with Tank. I don't know what, how everybody feels, but. Yeah, I got really Tank, good. too. I'm just, I just think Ryan nice, but I think the power of Tank going to just be, even though Tank gets hit, he gets hit a lot that I don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, like I said, Ryan, you know, he ain't no chump. He ain't no pushover. No, it could always go either way. It just, I look for certain things in fighters, and if something I don't like, I kind of judge him on that, you know. And uh, right. uh, I think overall Tank just tougher. Nothing to take away from Ryan. Right. He right. got my last right. name, man. I should be rooting for him. And maybe <laughs> subconscious, subconsciously, I am. But I got to be honest with myself. I wouldn't mind being right. wrong if he wins. Right. You know? right. That's right. okay. That's no okay. Doubt. No I just doubt. think tank a little bit tough. Right. How you, how your weekend been going, uh, uh, Brother Bob? Well, you know, I've been I've been doing my birthday joint from the second. So, you know, after I got the, the sisters uh, double team me the other day, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, can't, uh, I, can't, I can't complain. You know, I mean, I've, I've had a great week, a great <laughs> weekend from Sunday to this Sunday. I think I'm stopping celebration at 12 o'clock tonight. OK, week in the knees. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Blacklist Kennels in the Super Chat. <laughs> Strong salute, homie. Appreciate you. Black Liz Kendall. Yes, sir, brother. Black. Thank Liz you. Kendall. Yes, brother. Thanks. All right. First, let's get with the first question we got is uh, back in the day, what were some of the, the criteria or considerations for best in show or gamers to show awards? Uh, I'll start with you on that, Mr. Garcia. For me, I got this from, I forget who it was, but it's years and years ago. And I just ran with it. But for best in show, uh, for me is when I look at the dogs and, and usually it's the winner, you know, there's a story that uh, Cotton's bullet got best in show for one of his losses. He was that good. Right. But usually it's the winner. And, and uh, in my mind, which dog would I like to take home? That's kind of how I judge, you know, if I had a choice of all the dogs I've seen at a show, which one would I take home? That's how I pick best in show. Uh, Gameson show is just that. Now with me, it could be a winner too. It could be a dog that got that lost and showed extreme gameness, or it could be a dog that was that was losing, come back and win, showing gameness. So I use that to kind of those two criteria. You don't usually get both of those in the same show. Sometimes you do, and then you just pick which one you like better. But right, it's pretty right. simple for me. That's how I do it. Yes, sir. What about you, brother Bob? Well, you know, I'm always say the same thing. You know, anytime you have me go after my dear brother Richard, all I'm doing is just talking shit afterwards because he pretty <laughs> much always does a great job of answering <laughs> whatever you. the hell you ask. <laughs> yes, hey, you, you gonna have to get us a dummy up this motherfucker so that we feel <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest, you know, and I, I got nothing but nothing but love and respect for, for, for Brother Richard. You know what I'm saying? I bow down to the brother on most oh, things yeah. because he's just um he's a walking and fucking encyclopedia of knowledge. 
So, but I, I will say this. I differ a little bit. Um, and and the, not not so with, with Richard's thing, with the thing about Cotton Bullet, uh, if he lost the one uh, best in show, I just don't see you being a loser and being the best in the motherfucker. I, 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 yeah. I, only way I can see that, I could maybe do that if the loser is if he accidentally, his handler fucked up and he fouled out. Meaning the dog did his part, was whipping ass, and the fucking handler fouled the dog out. But everybody there knew that dog was the best thing that day. You understand? If that didn't happen, that there was no foul for that reason for him to lose, him or her, I can't see that dog being the best in show because evidently it wasn't the, it wasn't the best that night because it ain't it ain't going on with the win. You know? So I feel like best in show is just what it is i mean i i ain't gonna lie every time i went i'm looking for best in show over the money i didn't give a fuck about how much money i was taking home if i wasn't taking the best in show then i didn't feel like i want to fuck the money i wanted to be where people left and said man that motherfucker he brought was like that if that ain't what they said then uh i i don't even know what i'm doing there you know what i'm saying and, and that's just that's why I have so many best in show titles with a lot of my dogs, because that's what I'm there for. Meaning that I wasn't bringing a B class dog or C class. I, I, I had them to bring. I just wasn't bringing the motherfuckers out because I wasn't trying to get the game as a show title, or as I call it, the participation trophies. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for best in show. So best in show meaning when everybody leave there that night, regardless how many dogs went, they saying that motherfucker came there that let the night. That was a bad motherfucker he brought her, she brought her, whoever. And that's all they can talk about, more or less, with how many went that night. They talking about that one specific dog. And the same with the gamers. Same with gamers. Not talking nothing bad about the gamers. I've seen dogs, like Richard said, whether they, they won it or lost, that wasn't our average, as we say, game dog. Meaning these motherfuckers fumbled and stumbled and came over on their chins, you know, laid for all type of shit and where you, where where I have actually seen the games and show, and wanted to take that motherfucker home over the best in show, because of it showed to be the best bulldog that night, period. Right. Even though it didn't yeah. win best in show because it didn't, it didn't run through an opponent most likely like the other. Right. Yeah. Right. Coming with the truth, man. That's the truth. I, I right. don't think I would ever give a dog that lost best in show. That never. No, I couldn't. I could never, never even cross my mind. Mm -mm. I don't even know if that story is true. It's written, it's said, but I, I, they didn't say which one, which opponent, or anything like that. But I'm um, like Bach. I couldn't see doing that. You know, not at all. Yes, sir. Because even if all the other ones were crap, you know, the dog that beat right. him beat him. You should give it to right, him. right. That just means really to be. You know what? In that case, Richard, what? None of the motherfuckers best to show tonight. If they was that fucking bullshit, if all the dogs we seen that night, other than the one that was game, that won the game as a show, I don't even know if anybody deserves a best in show. To be honest, <laughs> right, right. And and I'm gonna just say this: I ref a lot of shows that right. I didn't see a game as a show or a best in show in the month. Yeah, okay. you're right. You're right about all that. Man. <laughs> I agree. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That, that, that that that's kind of why I say. Sometimes, you know, over the course of history, most shows are average and that ain't taking nothing away from nobody, but it's just hard to get, uh, you know, the top dog every time, every single one. If you've seen hundreds of them, you know, right, where, where they stand out, because if you saw that many and they were all bad at you would remember every one of them. Oh, right. the, ones every that, the ones that are the ones that are exceptional. That's the ones you you think of and i'm talking sometimes eight ten shows you know one match is above average is good where you say man that was a good one sometimes it's four sometimes it's six i've been to where one was there was eight of them and they were all good and i've been to one where there was eight of them and ten of them and only one was good so you know i agree Bob. right and last but not least and I'm going to just say this in a sexual term. It's all easy for us brothers to understand this one. 
<laughs> with all of the ass we ever got. Excuse us, Sister Tay Tay in the building. But with all the ass we ever got from women, it's only fucking a handful. I don't care if you fuck with a thousand of them. It's only a handful that you actually can remember their names and the times you spent with them. The rest of them, they could see you at a fucking movies or something. You'd be like, oh, my, my name is so you'd be like, damn, I don't recall you. You don't recall <laughs> me. No, I, it wasn't nothing spectacular that, that I can remember. Your head game wasn't all that and your other shit wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Or so all I'm saying is the, a good dog, you can never forget them 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You will remember when they mentioned that dog, you were like, oh, that was a bad motherfucker. That's the best in show. If you don't, if you can't recall the dog after 5, 10, 20, 30, then you, that motherfucker couldn't have been that bad. Couldn't have been that bad. You're right. You're right. Same analogy. If it was that good, you'd have remembered it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my. That's but my I, don't, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> huh? That's my pickup line. That's my pickup line to old ladies. When I, when I see an old lady, a cute old lady, I said, hey, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a while. She said, she looked at me funny. She said, um, I'm not sure I remember you. I said, oh, you nasty. She <laughs> said, what? She said, what? And then that, that, that break the ice, and then I got him from there. I got him. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinking. Let's see here. Let's go to the next Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you go there, a brother put on a, on a con brother Samurai, I think, said, wait a minute, was this? No, Soul Power. He put... You only remember the greats and the absolute worst. That's true. That's the truth. And I can also name a handful of the worst motherfuckers ever. You right. You right about that. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, we got another question here about um, does anyone know anything ab about Gardner's Biscuit as far as history or characteristics? Uh, you familiar with that dog, Brother Buck? I am not, when it comes to Garner's dogs, I'm really not the, the student of those dogs. It's right. not really those that I really, I just recently got, by default, my first Chinaman type dog ever that was gifted to me. So, no, I'm not, I couldn't tell you about those dogs. I'm sorry. Maybe, brother. Garcia might be there. Sorry, no, I'm not familiar with him. Okay, all right. See, that's a roster man question. He he, he might know a little something about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's move on to uh, <clears throat> what is the first uh, most prominent thought that comes to mind with a, a champion Chinaman alligator red boy cross? Um, Mr. Garcia. Uh, Colby Dibo. You want to look at it pedigree. Uh, you have uh, hard mouth Chinaman, you know, alligator, rugged, you know, it's, uh, or, or you could say, you could even say Tudor, Carver, Goldie, like that, you know, alligator is Tudor and Carver. And of course, the red boy, uh, you know, whether it's Colby or whatever it is, known for gameness like that. So, I could see where you're trying to put, you know, mouth and durability and, you know, ability with heart like that. Yep. You know. Exactly. You said exactly it. Two, two hard mouth lines with one that's known for gameless. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. You seen anything like that, Bob? Yes. Um, I have. I've, I, I've seen many of them. And, um, I, I like to cross. Um, I like the Hammond stuff cross with the Red Boy myself. Okay. And Tom was already dealing with uh, with Durant and Glenn and them in terms of the Connie Hams when he was crossing their Red Boy uh, like Metlin out Metlin Outlaw type uh, yeah. crosses. Yeah, with with him, with the with his style. Right. And from right. from what I what what I've heard, it uh, was pretty pretty. It, it blended nice. So adding adding that Hammond's blood to it, you know, 
Um, they, they, they. I, I like them because the Hammond stuffs are, are very. They, most of them are big bone, very durable dogs. Good hide on them, so they didn't cut easy. Um, real thick hides. Yeah. You True. know what I'm saying? I, that's what I liked about them. Very thick hides, durable, and um, I like them crossed with the smoothies. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I, that's yeah, a, that's I did a good a, plan. Yeah, yeah, I did a. I recently did a video on. Cottingham stuff, and uh, I wanted to try. You know, everybody knows Red Boy and all that, but I wanted to try and and key on more of the uh, Medleds Outlaw, the Turkey stuff. Is is related to Red Boy, so they right. kind of went right. in a direction where, and it has Red Boy in it too, the Brandy Girl stuff. But they went in a direction of of kind of line breeding dogs that are related but not directly related. And that may be the difference with Cottingham stuff and other Red Boy stuff, straight Red Boy, you know, is they went in that direction of the, the outlaw and, you know, the Medlands and and that stuff, you know. They, those were some crazy dogs, man. I mean, insane dogs, even to the point where they could be annoying because they don't shut up, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all day long. But they were kind of wild and primal, and it was just a little a different angle, you know, with the red boy. So I could see how you know putting the the, the alligator in there, like you said, the, uh, box, the alligator. They got thick skin, tough. Thick hide. That's what man. I mean. Tough, yeah, man. That's, yeah. That's what I mean about durability. They just rugged right. like that, you know. And uh, of course, Chinaman, you know. It's a classic Eli Carver. Yep. Even Eli Carver, they kind of it's kind of the same stuff. It's just distinctive because Carver bred his stuff a certain way. Eli dogs are bred a certain way, but they related pretty close anyways, you know. But it's just a matter of, of putting if you want to say two bloodlines together, kind of like the with Cottingham, you know, it's similar dogs. Depend on how they're bred, but they're not directly related like that. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> yes, indeed. All right. Let's get to this question here. Um, what weight had the best dogs pound for pound? The example he gave was like in boxing, you know, uh, he named fighters and stuff like that in different weight classes. He says, in your opinion, uh, back in your day, what weight class had the best dogs pound for pound? Uh, Mr. Garcia. Uh, let's see. We, we I think we talked about this. You know, and Bach we, mentioned we had this a few different times, right? But it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Bach mentioned you know that thirty eight, thirty nine. You know, for males, I think that that's pretty much uh, the most popular. You know, if you want to say, I don't know, thirty seven to forty, something like that for males. Yeah, and yeah. Females, yeah. you know. 34, 35, like that, you know. There's a lot right. of little females, right. too, but they're just a little bit smaller as far as the abundance of the weight than males. And and there's all different weights, you know. But, like, in my case, at one time, you know, which ain't, it's not the end-all, be-all, but it's not too far off. I had three or four dogs real close to the same weight, 37, 38, 39. And, you know, I had some in the low to mid 40s. I had females 31, you know, like that. Uh, most of my females didn't get over 40 pounds. I don't really like big females. So a 40 pound female for me was a big one. Right. But you could find them weights almost all day long in that in the high 30s. Say. What about you, Brother Bach? I know you answered this question before, but. Yeah, he again. He just he he even quoted what I was saying. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be just reset. I, I I mean, basically, I mean, you most of the females good. You know, it, you're gonna find. Let me just say this: you're gonna find a good dog in in any weight. But in terms of the 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 masses, in terms of looking at what weights were there. It's the the way I always see it. What are the easiest weights to find? The ones who have the most weights you know 
that 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 could compete. And it just normally was to me anywhere from thirty to thirty six in the females. And uh like like Brother Garcia said, it can either be from, from thirty six males to forty three seem to have been the easiest weights and within those weight classes to find. And to me, the the smaller dogs were always to me the best action. I, I've never seen any like 28, 29, 30, 31 males and females that didn't give me the best shows because for some reason both of them would always be able to bite. Both of them nonstop. I don't give a damn if it's two, three hours. They are not gonna be laying on their sides. They gonna be jamming the whole goddamn time. So um I've I've always were way more entertained by the smaller weights, you know. So my best ones I've seen is like I said, those those little twenties, those those late twenties to early thirties, and males or females were the best I've seen. Yeah. The boxing analogy is, is accurate because in boxing, maybe it's different now, but uh, it was like uh, lightweight to middleweight, so 135 to 160. Right. You know, when they start getting bigger, just like the dogs, you know, it's kind of uh, – if you got a heavyweight, light heavyweight, or heavyweight, something like that, if they good, it's the best fight you're going to see just because yep. they're bigger, they hit harder, you hear it more, they're more, you know – but the a lot of them ain't that. A lot of them ain't that good, you know. They ain't that good, and it just could be physics, could be whatever, or just the average size of the human beings is not, you know, over six feet, two hundred and twenty pounds. But it's kind of the same way in boxing. There's, you know, lightweight to middleweight. It's is there's a ton of them, you know. Uh, it's seen to be, and they're more at, skilled, Richard. They're mer- they're yeah. they're fast. Like I said, they're not laying around in between rounds. Hardly none of them. Right. None of them smaller. They don't. They don't take rounds off. They got to catch their breath, and then you know yeah. then you're gonna get it from if it's 15 rounds of, with the smaller division, they are gonna fight all 15 rounds, bro. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. And and uh, same with the dogs. You know, like Bach was saying, the little ones, they just fast, entertaining. So they have mouth too. You know. Right. Just on just smaller individual. But the big ones, sometimes you get them lumbering around and slopping around and wrestling. And, you know, right. it's not too entertaining. You know, uh, males, you know, up to 45 pounds, are, you know, you see some exciting matches. It just, uh, you know, there's some that are good, you know, uh, heavyweight dogs, but just overall, not a lot of them. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Let me go to you on this question here, Brother Bach. Uh, what made you step back from the dog game? Uh, was it a combination of the people, the consequences, etc.? cetera? Uh, what was it that made you uh, walk away? Never the dogs. The most disloyal, betraying people I've ever met in my fucking life is in the, that I'd have been a part of the dogs. There's some good ones. I don't want to say everybody because – I'm I'm on here with some good brothers here, and there's some good brothers in that chat. But um, when you're around people that that become jealous and envious, and um, you know, trying to have you robbed and fucking telling the police on you, and uh, you know, I think everybody who gets into anything knowing there's a possibility that if you get caught up in something, that you're gonna have some repercussions. I would think that a hundred percent of the people that would get involved would would expect the unexpected, and really shouldn't have you know whatever those consequences may be, they would pretty much have to roll with the punches, which they would most likely be willing to do, or they would not be a part of whatever it is that they would do, that would be so called deemed illegal. But like I said, when you around people that you think are your friends and brothers or sisters, that are the same people that's infiltrating your fucking whole program and can cause a whole lot of fucked up shit. And that's that's the reason. It's hardly anybody ever got out of dogs, man, because of the people. I mean, out of the dogs. Who the fuck can't love the most lovingest fucking creature? I, the only way you're going to get the love we get our dogs is from our mother. And that's not all of them. I'm talking about the real good mothers. 
Other than that, how the fuck you gonna leave leave something that loves you more than you love yourself? No, fuck nobody leaves for the dogs. It's the fucking people. And of course, some of course with the laws getting worse, then there's a lot of other people that left due to where they left from one place from a misdemeanor to a felony to Donald Trump made it federal. So I'm sure whoever it would be in it may leave for that. But mine was was from the people. Even though I got back in the dogs at the end. It'd be the fucking people running me back the fuck out. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, what about you, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, I got uh, convicted for the second time for dog fighting. Uh, and that about did it. You know, I had, uh, after I got out, I had five years probation. And I had to, I had to go to the local sheriffs and have them give me a paper that said, you know, I'm a convicted dog fighter. And I can't own any dog at all, right? And when I went to the sheriff, he had no idea. Like, what? I said, man, I got to show this to my probation officer in San Francisco. Just write me something, man. It's it's ordered by them. So he just got on the typewriter. Never heard of it, you know. And right. Wrote it out. I presented it to him. So that kind of did it for me two times, and that was enough, you know. And then you go through. I went through a little time period where I didn't have nothing to do with them. Maybe cave in contact with some friends or, you know, my buddy had my blood, just, you know, how things are going and all that. And then I got back into it, judging shows and doing what I do now. But like box said, it's not, it's not really the dogs. It's, it's more the people. And, and I talked to a lot of guys that are out of it, been out of it, you know, and that's what they always say. It wasn't the dogs, Richard. It was the people. I just can't, you know, can't deal with these people. Some were smart, like Dave Adams saw the writing on the wall. He just exited other people. Same thing, you know, they got out before anything did happen. And they had successful careers and all that. But as you get older, too, you know, for most people, you have responsibilities. So you have to weigh that against your love for the competition or even having the dogs, you know, and a lot of people, they get out, but they still have a dog or still have a couple of dogs. They just don't do what they used to do. They want them for, because they love the dog or they hold on to some of their blood or something like that. Maybe breed a dog here and there, but nowhere near like they used to in the past. Right. And it's, uh, you know, it's just like people, they just can't handle the people, you know, because somebody, Especially nowadays, and that's no knock on nothing. It's the atmosphere, it's the way the laws are, and all that. Somebody got to talk. Right, right. Well said, well said. Um, another question we got here is um, Would the panel consider a game AM staff uh, with, a, with a, a game American Pitbull Terrier a mutt? Would you, would you consider that cross a mutt? And he gave an example, ruffian blood, Amstaff, to Mayday blood. Would you consider that a mutt, Mr. Garcia? Um, for me, a mutt is, doesn't have any purpose, you know. And I've said this before in different things, uh, you know, chats and comments and all that. If you're crossing, mixing dogs and you have a reason for doing it, say a cat's dog, or a guard dog, you know, one, a guy in my uh, in my group, he crossed. I forget what it was, but he crossed it with pit bulls. And he's an old time dog man, you know, and they're protection dogs for his whole yard and his family. So if you have a purpose for that, that's okay. That's not a mutt. A mutt is, you know, mixed up piece of junk. Don't do nothing, you know. But if you're talking about the Amstaff stuff, it's just reverting back to. Well, especially the ruffian or Tacoma or something like that. Those were just dual registered pit bulls, if you will. And like we mentioned before, some people like Carver and, and others, you know, they bred to staffs. And even in my day, some people did it. The reason they did it in my day, and I'm just guessing that's why they did it back then, was to add mouth to their dogs, believe it or not. Right. And we had one. I always questioned that dog because he looked like a staff and he was a heavy Eli bred dog, but he didn't look like an Eli dog and he was brindled too. So a lot of the Tacoma ruffian, they are 
brindle. And there's brindle Eli dogs, but this it's a different color brindle. It's more of a lighter colored brindle. Right. Like that, you know, and, and but he looked like that and he could bite, man. So I always wondered if he was bred that way. But that's why they did it in my time, and I'm guessing that's why some people did it in their time, you know. Kamasinski was reportedly he bred to bull terriers, you know, and they were supposed to be fighting bull terriers. I don't know if they were, but it's just that like that fresh blood, you know, and people think that because he had bull terriers and then some of his match dogs, they had that slope, like kind of like a bull terrier, not that, not so, uh, you know, like actually like a bull terrier, but it was kind of, it wasn't like a pit bull head, you know? So, Again, if you're doing it for a reason and you get the results you want, you know, and people have always mixed different stuff with pit bull. And I'll say this too, when they did that, they may have put whatever it is in the in the pit bull crossed it like that, right? But as you continue on, they're breeding to mostly pit bull. It's like if you throw a hound dog in there for maybe say you want air or something like that, right? That's a mixed breed. You're going to take the offspring if they work out, and you're going to repeatedly breed it back to pit bulls. So after three or four generations, that outside blood is not really in there, but the traits could remain, mm-hmm. right? If you're testing your dogs and you're using the game ones and all that, you, you're breeding that cur out, but you're keeping the air part. So right, it, right. it's always right. been done. And if you're going to do that, I would say, yeah, the staff is the way to do it because they're closely related to pit bulls anyway. Right, right. Okay. Welcome down, Rad. Big stepping in the building. What's up, bro? Big Yo. stepping, baby. Big stepping in the goddamn house. How y'all doing today? Chilling, chilling, you got man. it, baby. You got it. A salute to my brother, BFTB Boxing in the building. I see you, homie. Salute. All right, to the boxing. All right. Uh, Ram, let me ask you that question. Um, let me go to the actual question. It says, uh, <clears throat> would the panel consider a game am staff uh, uh, cross with a, a game American Pit Bull Terrier, a mutt? Uh, and he gave an example, like ruffian blood, uh, which is am staff blood, <clears throat> mixed with uh, Mayday blood. Yeah, you can think of some money if you want to. Just bring some money if you ever see me with one. <laughs> The motherfuckers mix right back with the dogs. I mean, they just a, a different variation of them. Some people still kept them true to the fucking standard. They just changed the name of them so they could kind of hide under it. But hell no, shit. Uh, don't don't get caught slipping with that shit, man. I was doing that shit back in the day, and I don't even count them wins. I was just doing that shit because motherfuckers were saying that so much, and I was taking all they bread with them. Uh. 50-50s, you know? That shit was funny, too. Because motherfuckers be talking that shit until they get smashed. <laughs> then it's all, man. That ain't even a pure one. Why your pure one getting his ass kicked to it then, you know? Mm-hmm. It was the same shit that I had, but I wasn't telling them how it was bred, you know? It was still some game bred shit, just the name was different on the paper, that's all. Right, right. And uh, the motherfuckers bite too. You ever seen a real staff? The motherfuckers got a heavy, heavy mouth, man. Break your shit down for real. Now, I ain't saying go out and do that shit because you got to have the right blood to do it with, you know? And that's harder to find than a good fucking true bred carver, dog. But if you could find it, you know, you, you fucking found the 18. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your thoughts on the brother Bach? Well, like I said, you know, I got excellent expert people that answered it, and brothers both answered well. Uh, I'll give a little bit more extensiveness to it because it's something that kind of expert at. Um, and I learned it. I was a person up here last week was saying, why did Parker breed to the staff shit? Well, you tell him that why he got all them goddamn champions off of Tyrone's half-brother Nut Nut was a four-time winner. He was Tyrone's mother on the bottom, 
staff shit on the top. Champion Mad Blood, staff shit. I mean, there's is a bunch of them, right? So what what you said, brother, um, both of y'all, but with with um, Garcia mentioned about the ruffian, the Tacoma, the Saronas, certain certain joints you go back into, you gonna get monsters, monsters. Now a lot of times, real, you know, when you get into the dog game, you're not gonna have people tell you this shit. You're not gonna have people tell you this shit, and then you'll have some people get mad because you hear about it later. I didn't know Boudreaux went and bred to so it wasn't really meant for you to fucking know if some clown told you the shit never said nothing. Because you was happy with that five time, six time killer that could nothing stay with. So let's yeah. just look at it like this, right? It ain't no such thing as a mutt. The <laughs> pit bull is a fucking mutt. It's not a purebred fucking dog. It's a dog made up of several fucking dogs to begin with. So, you know what I mean? It's it's always just like Richard said. It's been people. And when you look at the pillar shit with Rock with Crab got that motherfucker like a straight pointer. Motherfucker got more goddamn dots on it than a little bit. Shit like a straight fucking hound dog. So them bitches terrible. The pillar shit. I'm just saying. It's a lot, motherfuckers say, man. They the same with Mayday and all of them. Man, that's fucking Tulsa and them that do it. Whatever the fuck you want to say, them motherfuckers threw a lot of bad motherfuckers. <laughs> and they was open to the world against the so-called Tulsa mixers. I don't know how true that shit is or not. Right. But what I'm saying is uh, people say that motherfuckers taking the Patterdales, mixing it with the... Who gives a fuck? I don't care if you show up there with a shepherd when I see you, when I was seeing you. I didn't give a fuck what you had there. Just had to wait. I didn't give a fuck if you had a baby shark they can stay in, on land long enough to fucking get it done without dying. Just show the fuck up at a wait in the day. But far as worrying about what I'm up, it's, it's all type of shit. But let me just put it like this here. Especially me who deal with a whole lot of inbreeds and line breeds type. You need a real out. You need a real out. Because what, what you don't understand is a lot of our dogs teeth are weak, lungs is fucked up, heart too big, heart too little. All type of shit fucked up when you go on tight like that. You can't. Everything ain't going to stay normal. You losing somewhere. The mental aspect of the dog, crazier than a motherfucker. You got different shit, so you need an uh, out to bring back the hard teeth. The real hard bone structure. Back to get the coach that you were looking for. And it did a whole lot of things strengthen up when you're able to go on an out. And like Richard say, then you go back and overlap it back with your regular program. But they always told me a quarter of bullshit in your dog ain't going to hurt nothing. Yeah. Okay. You need, so, you need some shit in your dog. You need yeah. some shit in it. Right. <laughs> but that that's some good shit to have. And for those who know what people putting in their dogs are not knowing, when you show up there and you see these motherfuckers getting killed in short order, I don't think nobody says, do you got some ma'am staff in your dog? No. <laughs> What the fuck they gonna say? That's a bad motherfucker. Damn, that bitch is bad. You understand? So, uh, the AM staff is a hell of an out. I'm gonna say it again, a hell of an out. When you're dealing with a purebred, I don't care what the line is, dog, that's one motherfucking out that will sure enough give you that motherfucking punch that you probably ain't never had in your life in your program. Because it's even better than going to the Carver or any other hard mouth um, turtle buster shit, any of that shit. It will, it will give you more mouth and more power than either one of them. Just to give you a secret that I normally like to keep my damn self. Right. Yes, yeah. Indeed. In fact, uh, Buffalo Soldier, he openly said, you know, Grand Champion for Raw and some of them, he openly said they're staff bred, though. They're staff, you know. All day long. Some, day long. some, some heavily than others. If you look up uh, TJ Fisher's champion whiskey, she's a blue or gray or seal, whatever you want to call it. She was a bad bitch, four-time winner. In fact, I'll say this because it's out there and she didn't get credit for it. She won her fourth match and somebody challenged TJ right there and he told him, go get your bit. She finished that one too in short order. So she actually won two on the same night. He wouldn't count it because it wasn't a, a 
you know, set up beforehand. But she finished two on the same night within, you know, 20 minutes of each other. And she was a blue or gray or seal, whatever you want to call it. She has a win over a champion. She beat Irish Jerry. All her wins were over top guys. But And she's an eighth staff. But the her color didn't come from the staff part. It came from the other stuff. People look at her and go, well, she's staff, you know, and that's why she's that color. That's not why she's that color. But she does have staff blood in her. So there's a lot of other people that did it. Some will tell you they did it. Some won't because, you know, people, you know how they get, you know, oh, that's a mutt, that's this. Or it's a secret they want to keep, like, like Fox fan. But he's right. You don't care, man. What, what is it? Whatever it is, it works. And it's a killer. But they do add mouth. That's what everybody likes. Everybody likes the knockout puncher in boxing. Everybody likes the finisher. And bone Short structure. Order, and, and bone structure. structure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said, it's totally, it's something totally different. Correct. They may have been related, you know, 60 years ago. Correct. But it's so far removed from the original that they're not related no more. That's right. So you so you throw that fresh stuff in there, it's completely different, and boom, you have that, like you said, the bone structure or thicker skin, bigger yes. teeth, harder bigger mouth. Teeth. Yep. All and that. better hearts, better hearts, better physical anatomy that was yeah, able right. to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's a good point you made that the regardless of how you breed your pit bulls, they all there it's been they've been bred amongst each other for so long. That it's the same stuff. So over time, of course, you're going to have physical deformities. Are you going to have, you know, kidney problems or heart failure? Or, you know, and that's happened with different breeders. You know, usually from inbreeding, but but irregardless, if you ain't inbreeding and you come up with physical defects, it's because the dogs are all heavily related in some way. You know, they all go back to the same stuff. So to fix it, you throw that. What we call shit in there, throw it in there. And uh in one generation it's fixed. And then you can go breed your line That's you right. Know. That's right. And maybe every so often throw that stuff in there again. It's every two, three generations, whatever, you know. They do that shit I in think, Europe all day. They do yeah, that in Europe I think all that, day. I think that's what Komasinski was doing if he did it with his bull terrier. You know, every once in a while, every so many generations, he'd throw a bull terrier in there, throw one in. Hey, going, and, you know, and you know his dog was hard to beat. Okay, mm -hmm. he was hard as hell to beat. He had yep. some terrible ass dogs. Shit. Yeah. Then the youngsters challenge him when he's 70, 80 years mm -hmm. old, and he still whoop him. Now I'm telling you, and, you talking and, about and, some and, terrible shit. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. And if his dogs were anything like him, he'd fight you too at 80 years old. There's a story That's out right. There. He Somebody sure would. He beat, beat the <laughs> shit out of the dude. He was like, the guy was like thirty years old, whatever he was, and from a skin, he was almost eighty. He punched the shit out of him because you know, he disrespected him, whatever it was. But he wasn't no cur, neither were his dogs. You know? No. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> hey, uh, staying on whiskey, she got a famous uh brother too, but it don't show up on the paperwork. But yeah, I asked right. PJ about it, and he was like, "Man, I seen that motherfucker in the litter when I went and got mine." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she threw good dogs, you know. Yep. And he was and, telling and, me uh, she had won another one after that that two for one night, so she really won like six. <laughs> yeah, could be. And him, if you talk to him, he, you know, it got to the point where he told me, "Rich, I didn't even condition him. I just take her off the couch, basically." Yeah, it wasn't nothing. Yep. Wasn't nothing going to stay with her, you know. And and uh, uh, even her offspring, you know, or her relatives, you know, they did good. And uh, uh, a lot of people that seen her, will, they back up what he says, you know. So, yeah, she was a badass, you know. Watch the man boom. What's up, brother? Yes, I to my brothers, man. I'm I'm traveling, but I, 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 I damn near forgot to punch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, Boone in the house. Yeah. Mr. Boone. Yes, I didn't call him schoolboy action. Ram the run dance master. Kevin 78 sports. Only in America 
Bakari. <laughs> <laughs> Salute, OG. Big up maximum to the maximum posse out there. 78 Sports Posse. Yes, sir. Let me hear you. Well, you better speak to Tay Tay. Wait a minute. While you shouting out, talk to Tay Tay. Goddamn, she in the building. Tay Tay, I like to play. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah. to Lazaro. Lazaro yeah. Watkins in the Super Chat. Appreciate your support, man. He says, uh, salute. Has anyone seen as uh, many black and tans back in the day as how many are coming out now? Uh, Brother Bach. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? To be honest, um, back in the day, I didn't see a lot of that Rottweiler, Doberman, Pinscher, Black and Tan as I do see just what posted on Facebook, for instance. I see uh, many of them today. So, yeah, I had hardly seen them back then, to be honest. Okay. Watch the man. What about you? Black and Tan dogs. Uh, yeah, I, I seen them. I thought it was... Uh, uh, Rockwell, you know, <laughs> but they said it was a bulldog. <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, it's a bulldog. And then they, I said, damn, you know, because I had never seen that until I uh, went to some people's yard. But, uh, and so now, you know, uh, and, and not only that, you know, that, that go to show you how, you know, when you're in certain areas, you see, certain colors and then you see something different but and then other areas you know they might have a whole lot of them like that you know i've seen them brown with like a blackish in the brown buckskin blackish brown look you know what i mean i've seen them in different shades but you know the color like a, a rockwiler you know I've, I've seen more of those uh online like 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 Brad said, then uh and then too, you know, the internet just done brought us so much close together, man. I mean, you know, it's done brought people all the way from the other side of the world to right here in our backyards. You know what I mean? So I that's a good thing, man. So yeah. Yes, sir. Uh what about you, Mr. Garcia? Uh it's kinda like what Rossman just said, you know, and, and Bach too. I don't I'm not familiar with the dogs today. If I do see them, they're on online pictures and like that. But like Rossman said, it was certain people or certain areas, you know, where you saw them. Like uh, Sorrels had some, you know. Uh, Mr. K had a lot of them, and he had heavy Carver and Bully Sun dogs. Uh, Murphy's Oiler stuff, you know, more heavy Eli Bully Sun like that. And uh, uh, and I've seen tricolored dogs too, three different colors, like like black and tan, and and uh, maybe some white on them or red, even you know. My buddy had one; she lost it. He said that's why she lost because she's all mixed up colored. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she was good while she lasted, but uh, it's more like that. Certain people or certain areas had them, you know. Uh, Mr. K, he had a little. 30 pound champion. He won the same night Miss Rowdy won, Big Red's sister. Uh, man, I forget his name. But he was tiny, man, 30 pound male. Uh, but yeah, like that. Certain people or certain areas had it. Yes, sir. What about you, uh, uh, Brother Rand? Yeah, I had one back in the day, some old uh, Sorrel stuff. Black and tan, bitch, look just like a Rottweiler. And that's what I used to tell motherfuckers she was. I was living in an apartment when I had her. She was motherfucking good, good as they could fucking be, you know? That shit, it pops up. And like OG Boom was saying now, with the advent of fucking the internet, we could see it more. I'm pretty sure the same number being bred as it's always been. We just see it more now, that's all. Ain't nothing mythical or special about them. They either going to be good or they not. So when you see them, you know, that's what you're going to get, a good one or not. But, yeah, that shit happens. Shit. Hog is a funny color looking like that. You see that in a lot of Carver dogs, too, though. For some reason, that shit will pop out like Ironhead and shit, you know? 
It's just a recessive trait that pop out. Now, some people might be breeding that shit to make it dominant and try to use it as a sales pitch, like <laughs> motherfuckers was trying to sell. Oh, I got the only tight bread, red, red nose Eli dogs, and all oh, the motherfuckers was trash, you know? Mm hmm. All right. Salute to Doug. Thank you, Doug. Salute to you, Doug. He says, Am staffs were all originated from UKC registered American people terrorists. AKC selected a group of American people terrorists for confirmation shows. The blood is American people terror. They they just stopped um, competing with AM staffs and um, were bred for looks. Uh, some are game, odds are less. Salute, salute. salute yeah, it's up. actually the, what the AKC called them. UKC is the one who came up with the American Pitbull Terrier name. Mm -hmm. So AKC called them, you know, uh, American Staffordshire Terrier or just Staffordshire Terrier. The American Staffordshire Terrier is a little bigger. The Staffordshire Terrier are smaller. Yeah. And they still kept that. The AKC is the one who actually came up with pit rules and you had to have a sanctioned referee. You know, they accepted the 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 matching part of it up to probably the thirties or something like that, you know, and they were the ones that came up with the pit champion nomenclature, you know, so you had, to, it had to be sanctioned by the U UKC for it to count. And that's why back in the day, you see a lot of dogs, you know, this many time winners. And then you see other ones like champion Billy Sunday actually have the champion title attached to it because those were sanctioned by the UKC. So, yeah, it's the same dogs way back in the day. The UKC just, they saw the writing on the wall, too, and they got away from all that. They stopped sanctioning matches and uh, went to more of the show dog thing, you know. But some people, like Keith Sparks, he, he had his, like, triple registered, and he even entered pit bulls in AKC confirmation shows and one and one time there was several dog men including pete sparks and they entered in that uh, that one out of new york the the big akc show they have i forget the name of it but it's real famous they still show it on tv and a lot of them guys won won uh, ribbons and trophies you know with pit bull right but they were they were registered as Am staffs too, and they were registered with the UKC and with the ADBA. It wasn't called the ADBA back then. When it first started out, it was called something else, and then they changed it later. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, it's the same. Comes from the same original dog. I mean, like, why not? You know, just a name change. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Young Bulldogger in the super chat. Salute to you, man. He says salute. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Yes, indeed. Let's get the lights up, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Well, y'all, this was a good show, short and sweet. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end it here and uh save some good stuff for y'all on Patreon. Thank y'all for all the people that are signed up to the Patreon and are leaving questions on the Patreon. We, we got y'all this week. We will be back with uh, another episode. Uh brother Ram, why don't you give us a quick disclaimer, bro? All right, oh, I'm over here grubbing. <laughs> As always, none of this shit is intended for, nor should it be used towards any illegal purposes or activities. If you is using it for that, you already know, man. If there's any heat you bring come my way, when I see you in court, when I see you in the motherfucking county, when I see you on the yard, I'm putting a Pokemon in your ass. You ain't gonna like it. Poke, poke, poke. Every time I see you, and you already know. Tomorrow, Monday, scratch hard than a motherfucker into that bitch, man. Bite that bitch down. Be great. I'm fucking grubbing. This shit good than a motherfucker, too. Happy Easter, everybody who celebrate. I don't, but I like to eat this good Easter food. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Any I'm excuse right, is a good excuse. <laughs> Hell yeah, for some good old free food. Yeah. While we up here, for those, okay, again, um, brother, Brother uh, Kev, let them know because people keep trying to figure out where can they go, how do they get on Patreon. Okay. You might want to tell them. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I put the link in the chat several times, but this is what you can do. 
go to um, underneath this video. There's a description box. They got a bunch of links in there. All right. Click on the link that says all my links. And once you click on that, you'll see a link for Game Dog uh, Patreon. All right. It's, pa it's, pa it's patreon.com forward slash Game Dog Talk. All right. It's going across the, the screen right now. Patreon.com forward slash Game Dog Talk. You type that in and you'll get there. I'll, right. the, I'll, drop the, I'll drop the link again for you guys when the video post this video post I'll put it in the chat uh, the comment section so y'all can see it yeah, sure. alright y'all thank y'all for joining us we'll catch y'all next week peace peace